time to say goodbye to my MDR 10 RBTs, baby. Mwah. What is going on, my peeps? Your boy Versatile is back with another video. Back talking about my Sony WH-1000 XM3 noise canceling over ear headphones review. There's one thing I realized with headphones is they're relatively easy to review if they're, you know, relatively simple because it's just a matter of do they sound great? What's the battery life like? The quality and the build of the headphones and the features. And so with the XM3s, they certainly will <laughs> be a beast to talk about. Before I do, make sure you guys like and subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below if you have these. What do you think about them? Do you plan on getting about them? Uh, uh, getting them? Do you plan on getting them? I just. Mm. And yes, we're gonna talk about that price. But the first thing I'm gonna talk about with these headphones, since I'm saying goodbye to these, technically I'm giving these to my wife. Oh, hello, my beautiful, beautiful XM3s. That's the nickname because I'm not. I can't keep saying that whole name. Uh, these feel lighter. Let me go ahead and put this away. Of course, as you guys know, you get in here uh, the uh, head, uh, the, the uh, double or dual headphone jack. I believe you could use this for like on airplanes and stuff like that. And it's got the little input there. And then you get the wire portion when the battery runs out or whatever. You just use it at the headphone jack on whatever device you're running and then plug them right into the headphones, you know, right here. So that's these headphones uh, in terms of. The, the beautiful carrying case that one day I'll get tired of like worrying about but in terms of the headphones they are amazing now one dislike or almost dislike I had was the fact that the adaptive sound control or the ambient sound control kept changing but that's because I had it on so if you have adaptive sound control on when you set a noise canceling setting it is subject to change when you start moving and so one of the things I was testing was battery life on these using the various sound control methods or features and when I would get up it would kind of slightly have to change it, it would slightly change and then I would have to whoop, use the button here the ambient button right here if you see it next to the power button I have the ambient button I have a set to use as the ambient button side note you can change the function of the ambient button button as soon as I find it again you can change the, the the function from ambient to your assistant, whether it's Siri or Google Assistant. So, and I use it for ambient sound because I don't really talk to the Google Assistant like that. So, the nice part about that is that also works seamlessly with your phone. But the one thing I was, I realized was if you turn adaptive sound control off, it doesn't change on you like that anymore. Once you set it to a uh, sound control setting, like noise canceling or ambient sound, uh or just like straight pass through sound it stays there so that's that's dope so thank you sony for for you know coming out the gate well i wouldn't say coming out the gate this is the third iteration this is my first pair but i'm pleasantly pleased with the active noise canceling of these headphones how they how it works so seamlessly with the button with the app that you get you got download sony's headphone app and from there, you go in there and set up the headphones to your liking. Now, let's talk about that battery life real quick. <laughs> I use LDAC on these or HD audio. So whether it's my phone and it it's HD audio or my tablet and I'm using LDAC, it's still the same thing. It's just term different. That's, you know, higher quality sound. And I have my headphones set up in the app to prioritize sound quality. So they advertise 30 hours on these. You will get about 23 hours with adaptive sound control on but the ambient noise so like it allows some pass through uh but not all and it still does a level of noise canceling you'll get about 23 hours uh with that i went through one full 10 hour day with these on and then uh, one full eight hour day with these on at work and then i still had 20 percent left after those two days which means give or take another five to ten hours i would uh, probably I would much more so lean towards five because it would suck about it would literally take about 40 percent per day it, it was interesting that I got 40 percent 
you know, drawn out of it the second day, despite only wearing these for about eight hours. So, but yeah, like I said, about 23 hours with LDAC and I use LDAC period. So all my battery like, uh, experimentations was with high quality sound using LDAC prioritizing sound quality. So that's with the adaptive noise or canceling now straight noise canceling and having a flicker background whenever I started moving straight noise canceling. I got about the same amount of time. You'll lose about an hour or two. So about 21 hours with straight noise canceling using these with the LDAC prioritizing sound quality, you get about 20 to 21 hours. So that being said, if you don't use LDAC, or if you, uh, and then of course you get like, I think about 24, 25 hours if you just like allow pass through it, it didn't have to cancel a lot of noise. So if you did that, you get uh, about 25 hours. So if you use no LDAC and you run these with noise canceling, your of course your battery time is gonna go up. And if you don't use any noise canceling, you're going to get much closer to that 30 hours. So Sony's advertisement of 30 hours of 30 hours is if you don't use LDAC, because that's really what probably drains the battery is the high quality sound. So if you use LDAC, you already subtract about five hours off of that. But that's still amazing for a pair of headphones. Like if you just think, ow, if you just think about like earbuds alone, you get like five to six hours, and then with the charging case, you get like 13 hours. But with headphones, you're looking at like 15, 16, 17 hours on a on a decent pair. These bad boys, these are six to seven years old, guys. I bought these back in like 2012, 2013 for 200, well, 180 bucks, but there were 200 at the time. These are still very good. So, like, and I was getting like 17 hours on these. I could I could get a whole day, maybe two out of these without charging it way uh, way back in the day. Now, of course, the battery degrades over time, but I could still Ooh, if they charge correctly, but again, it's probably because I dropped these a couple times. I could make it through a day. And you're getting like 10 hours, 10, 11 hours, 12 hours. So that's those. So I have so much more faith in these being six years newer in terms of innovation, battery improvements, quality improvements, that these are going to last just as well. Speaking of quality, what is the build like? Like I said, it's lighter. It's ever so slightly lighter. <laughs> and now it's probably just because these ear cuffs look to be a little bigger or maybe a little more. <clears throat> yeah, they feel these feel just a little bit heavier than these. Get that oil off my hand. These are relatively lighter. When it, if you get the right ear, like you know, headphone side length corrected. The way they sit on your ears, you'll forget that they're on your ears because they just fit perfectly. But if you have them like slightly off, you can feel them tightening on your head. There's a terms in here and because these are brand new, I haven't broke them in yet. So, you know, this past week or so, it's it's been a little tight up here. But again, once I finally realized I set this correctly, it's about for me, it's about four stops. And then once I got them on, I'm good. And as you see, it's got like the gold accents around the, the ambient noise levelers right here and then the sony's embedded in that's like this beautiful gold copper tone and that's pretty much it in terms of like the other color on here these are not these are like the nice black pair you get the labeling right here of the sony wh1000 xm3 the ear cuff padding great is amazing very solid quality and that's why i said i have faith in these because if the previous headphones i've been using for the past six years have lasted me six years then I already know that these, despite probably trying to get the XM4s whenever they drop or whatever new pair of headphones that Sony drops, I would like to get. These I know are going to last me a very, very long time. So in terms of build quality, amazing. Now, let's talk about sound. Amazing. Now, maybe some of my knowledge about sound or my bias towards these is going to be a little, just a little offset of kilter, just because I'm coming from a six year old pair of headphones. Granted, the sound quality of these is still good too, but these get louder. These feel more oomph, like the bass hits a lot harder in these, and you can turn the bass up in here. You got great EQ settings in these, in the headphones app to actually turn up 
like bass and tune it to what you like or presets that they have on here you can activate virtual sound uh like a concert and arenas and stuff like that i didn't play with those because i didn't i didn't really care for those so i, I might try but the, the sound i get out of these is amazing just in terms of music alone bass mids the highs great in terms of like just straight like cardioid like uh sounds or audio like from podcasts and stuff like that podcasts on coming from my phone sound great now it depends on the individual who's you and their equipment setup because sometimes you might hear a slight echo but it might just be from their sound setup it still sounds great sounds very lively in your ears you just hear like a tint of echo or so uh and i think it's just because of their setup but that also speaks volume of these headphones being able to pick up that kind of noise still because i didn't catch that kind of noise coming out of these bad boys i caught it coming out of these so again kudos to sony who again founded off of the word sonos meaning sound they know what they're doing when it comes to audio equipment you're talking about the first with the walkman the cd player you know what i'm saying I don't, the point is you see their evolution and or their progression when it came to when it comes to audio they always bring it with the audio game, and so that's why I will always prefer Sony's headphones. I do like Monster. The pair I had prior to these were Monster headphones, which were great, very bass heavy, and I got these that leveled out to be much more crisp overall. These are crisp. Music-wise, YouTube-wise, editing-wise, crisp. I like these a lot. I'm, I'm just happy I, I got these now because I've been trying to get these anyway, now I might try to aim for their WF 1000 X and threes. They're over, you know, their earbuds. I might try to aim for those, but in terms of the over ear headphones, solid, solid. So one of the things I wish that they did add to these headphones were, or was, or is the Bluetooth five. Bluetooth five dot was out last year. And I was very surprised that they didn't add it to these headphones. It, they got Bluetooth 4.2. So uh, that kind of that disappointed me a little bit just because with the devices we have all throughout this year, it's got Bluetooth 5.0 and a lot of devices last year that had Bluetooth 5.0. So it would have made it even easier to connect multiple devices. With Bluetooth 4.2, you don't have that much range and capability when it comes to there. And the reason why I say that much capability is because like these, my six year old pair right here, I could connect to my phone and my tablet. You can do the same thing with these. So I can receive calls from my phone with these while playing media audio from my tablet and or vice versa. So in order for you to do that, what you have to do is connect it to your phone first and then go into your Bluetooth settings, go into the settings for the headphones and turn off media audio and then use your tablet or your other device that you want to connect to and then have it connect there, search for it there and it will connect media audio. And then if you want, you can go back to your phone and turn on media audio, but it's not going to play any media audio from your phone. So you will be able to receive calls from your phone into your headphones while they're still connected to your second device. So that's like, I'm going to call it a loophole, but maybe that's what Bluetooth 4.2 or 4.0 or maybe even 4.1. One of them, or just in terms of Bluetooth, that's like a, a somewhat of a loophole that I found to be able to use for these headphones and for these headphones. So you can connect two devices. Hopefully with the XM4s or and or any other pair, you can stream media audio from two different sources into the headset. That will be dope because then while I, you know, you scroll on Instagram or Twitter or on, maybe a YouTube video pops up on your phone and you want to play that instead of the one that you're currently playing, it'd be nice for it to pause there and start playing on the other device. So hopefully that will be some innovation in the future if that is not already. But at least for now, you can connect your phone and your tablet to the headset, one for calls, one for media audio. Now, getting to the price. Getting to the price, these are worth, these are $350. Is it worth $350? Why not, right? Of course, I'm not advocating for them to always charge us a hand and a foot to buy good equipment or good functionality, good, devices good products i'm not advocating for them to charge us our whole life just to get something but what i am saying is and really kind of uh i don't want to say retorting but kind of piggybacking off of john morrison and 
Lou from Unbox Therapy. The price of technology now, we also have to factor in that technology now is amazing, is super great. So when you look at the price, you're paying for something that is literally like the best thing that you have, unless you spent that kind of money on something else. So like a phone being $1,000, Buy your best computer that you have in your home right now, unless you went and spent money and built out your own custom PC or you got like a, a MacBook Pro or something like that. And even then your phone can kind of, can, you know, it's in the realm of competition with your laptop or a PC. It's your best for, uh, your media entertainment uh, product because you can do everything on there at once, play games, watch movies, watch videos, uh, engage in social media. So just in terms of a phone, when you think about a phone being $1,000, it's no longer as unrealistic because everything's so good now. So the same with headphones in that these are $350. I still feel like maybe they could have cut or shaved $50 off of that. And you probably will see these on deals. I mean, Sony's been just giving these away. You know, I want mine through the camera cam. They were giving these away when you pre-ordered the Xperia one and renewed on Amazon, link will be in the description. You can get these for like 245 or 285. So the price falls on these, are uh, falling on these pretty well right now. But for 350, you're getting literally one of the top two, top three best pair of headphones at that price. Uh, when it comes to noise cancellation, sound quality, build quality, and functionality. I, Sony WH-1000XM3 over ear noise cancellation headphones review. Don't ever make me say that again. Hope you guys appreciate it, enjoyed it, learned a little something. Maybe I helped you think about buying these or feel better about your purchase with these. Uh, again, links or the link will be in the description. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below about how you feel about these headphones, if you got them, if you plan on getting them, all that great stuff. But you are versatile signing out and until the next video, Mm, 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 mm. Wait for